Hello, good morning, Okoe Region. This is Tony Miles, and we're back with another segment of Hidden Gems of the Okoe Region. And I, you know, I have to plug myself. Bought to you by Transforming Greatness. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let me tell you today, it's going to be no nonsense. We are jumping right into my guest because she is this awesome woman of God. And she has written a powerful, powerful mm. ebook. And the name of this ebook is uh, The Mind Keeper. And I'm telling you, uh, in today, with everything that we are all dealing with, she unlocks the secrets of peace beyond understanding. And uh, it's such a powerful book. And I tell you, you know, her uh, tagline is walking in freedom in your mind. Now, come on, girl. <laughs> you know there's a shout right That's there. That's right. And I just want to say real quickly before I introduce you, uh, as we were talking, I told you I read a book a long time ago. Uh, it was by Beth Moore, uh, and it's called Discovering Your Purpose. And it was about this size right here. And that little book mm. changed my life. Wow. And so as I've been reading this book, <laughs> there are so many great nuggets out yeah. of this book, Julie, that everybody needs to go to her website and download this ebook. But before you do, let me introduce to you the mighty woman of God. She's a pastor, evangelist, but most of all, she's a mother. Mm -hmm. She's a mentor. Yeah. And she has the heart for women. Amen. 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 So this is Julie G. <laughs> <laughs> and she's been on the show before, but we had to bring her back to Aww. talk about this powerful book. I'm so excited. Welcome, Julie. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's always a joy to be with you as my friend, you yeah. know. And, uh, and as a co-labor in all that we're doing uh, at our church, at Dwelling Place Church International, with the Mentoring uh, Institute, the International Institute of Mentoring, but uh, just in the kingdom. Yeah, you know, It's just in the kingdom that we're able to run together. So I thank yeah. you for this opportunity to be here today and talk about, um, I really believe it is a great jewel. Yeah, um, it is. That, that the Lord has given me from the Lord, and uh, and so it's been exciting. Well, you talk, I was, I've been reading it, and uh, last night, uh, the Lord just moved me to go back through it again, mm -hmm. and uh, I picked up, I had, I guess I didn't pick it up early uh, when I got the book from you, but uh, you talk about a gem. Yeah. That's in this book. Yeah. I don't want to give it away, because we've got some time here, but okay. I want you to talk. Okay. But I also want you to share with them, before we go into uh, the seven chapters right. in this book, they're short but powerful. Mm -hmm. Hear me. Uh, but let's talk about the revelation okay. that is the foundation of this book. It is. Okay. It is. Okay. I was so excited because I'd heard so many great things about a sozo, mm -hmm. and that uh, was birthed out of Bethel and um, in Redding, California, and it's really like a just a real intimate counseling session with Father God, Jesus, and, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. It's just like, that's all I can <laughs> say. And uh, so anyway, so it was a very intimate time with our dear friends at the ramp and yeah. um, and uh, Hamilton, Alabama. And so um, I went there and uh, just I've been through a lot of things in my life. And so I knew the journey through the Sozo would be pretty intense. And so I was prepared and I prayed up. And so when we started the, the process, it's just really just kind of seeking, is there any walls in your life that's hindering you, mm -hmm. any unforgiveness, any, any barriers that's holding you back from really uh, walking in the freedom in the Lord? And so as we kind of addressed um, some different walls and uh, that I was, um, I was given... Um, uh, some revelation through that process. Yes. But when we kind of got to this area, the question which she said 
is there was a there was a statement that came up in the Sozo um, that um, is there a, a lot this had come up in a statement it went saying that do you feel that you were unworthy of love mm. so when did you first believe that okay so that's what's coming up and so uh, she says ask Father God when did you first believe that well I'm thinking I don't have to ask I know exactly where I believed it you yeah. know and so and I went right to the image in my mind and so I began to d- explain to her where I was and it was the first time I was sexually abused and uh, and uh, and you know you deal with um, you know because it was my abuser was my biological father yeah. and uh but I am very passionate about people that are hurt that don't get healed will turn around and hurt someone else. Come on. You know? Yes. And so um, I wish that he would have got the healing in his younger years yes. that I did. Yes. You know, later. And so he did end up having some radical healing as an adult. And, uh, and we're very, God. very thankful. And a lot of people don't get that. That that restoration and uh, but in this time she said where were you and I said I was five years old I'm laying on the edge of the bed and I'm shaking uncontrollably mm-hmm. and I'm just weeping and crying and then um, so that's where I was and she says well let's ask Father God where he was hmm. and you know like I said in the book well a little bit rose up in me yeah I'd like to know too <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, uh, but, you know, that's everybody's yes. feeling. But there was so holy in the room. It's like I thought about it, but then it was like it wasn't important, you mm. know. And so I just went to the Lord and I asked him where he was. And it was just like I had never asked him that, I don't yeah. think, you know. Yeah. And so when I asked him, I didn't hear anything, but all of a sudden I saw it from a different perspective, you know, I got to look down and see myself, and then it, I'd never seen him in the room, and then all of a sudden I could see him. Mm. And she was, she said, you see him? I said, yes, I see him. And I had my eyes closed. We're just kind of in prayer. And she said, well, where is he? And I'm getting overwhelmed because I'm getting the revelation as she's talking to me, you know, and I'm overwhelmed because I said, he's on his knees by the bed. And she says, by the bed. And I said, yeah. And I said, he's face to face with me. And by this time, I'm, it, like, because it's coming, the revelation is coming and I can, <laughs> the visual, I can see it. I'm overwhelmed, oh, you know, because God. I'm seeing myself as a, a young child and thinking I was alone. Totally alone. And, and in this moment, and I, that vision has, has just been embedded in my spirit all of my life. So anytime you talk about pain, I go back to that one moment, you know. Can I say something so you can regroup a little bit? (laughs) (laughs) It just fell in my spirit that you go back to a place where you were hurt by your natural father, Mm -hmm. but your father, your Abba father, was right there. Yeah. Okay? He was. And I think we put so much on yeah. our natural families. Right. And our natural fathers that we forget about the great mm. love that our ever father has for us. Wow. It, and it was so beautiful because it was like I was crying so much, but it was almost like my tears were on his face. He was so close to me. Yes. You know, and then she says, oh, she's overwhelmed that he was on his knees face to face with me. And she said, what is he doing? And so, and um, and she said, ask him, like, what is he doing? And then I'm, and I'm seeing it. Like, mm-hmm. I'm not having to ask him because it's coming. Right. I can see. And then all of a sudden I see his hand on my head. And uh, and mm. I said his hand is on my head, and she said it is, and I said yes, and so we're we're both just kind of overwhelmed and with this, and they're just praying, and then um, she says, "What is he doing?" And I said, um, "It's just like I knew it; it just came out of my spirit." And I said, "He's he's keeping my mind," mm. and uh, and she's like, and I'm just have my eyes, and so tears are flowing, and I'm receiving this revelation. That I've lived all these years looking back on that and never saw that, you know. Yeah. So it's like, and then 
And then she says, well, let's ask Father God for forgiveness, thinking that he wasn't there. Yes. And, uh, and so I was just, because I have this visual, you know, I'm just asking the Lord to forgive me uh, for thinking that he had abandoned me, that he had yeah. left me alone. And, and I know a lot of people would say, but if he was there, then why didn't he stop it? You know, whatever. And, uh, but, you know, in that moment, it didn't matter. matter. The healing that was taking place in my spirit, I wasn't asking that question, right. you know, right. because it was just so pure. And his love was so passionate. And he said, and she said, well, in the process of sozos, anytime you ask for forgiveness, that the Lord normally gives you something yes, the as exchange. a revelation. There's an exchange yes. that takes place. And, uh, and she said, well, ask Father God what he's going to give you. And so I asked him, and I said, it's another jewel because previous in the sozo, he had given me a red jewel. Yes. And so she says, I said, he's given me another jewel. And she says, well, what color is it? And I said, it's yellow. And so she's just all excited. They're just so awesome. Yes. They just support you in the yes. whole journey. You yes. Know? And, uh, and I said, it's yellow. And I just knew it in my spirit. And she says, what does it represent? And I said, joy. And, uh, and so she said, joy and I said yes and uh, and I knew and the scripture just came out of my spirit I said because the joy Joy of the the Lord Lord will be my strength strength. and then she says well ask him what he wants you to do with it and uh, and I said well he he then he kind of just gave a statement that he said I'm giving you this jewel because of the joy of the Lord will be your strength for your journey that's ahead of you because of what you've encountered there's a journey ahead of you and I'm giving you the joy of the Lord will be your strength. And then she says, well, what does he want you to do with it? And I said, he wants me to put it in my bones. And, and I'm just like, as I'm getting this <laughs> revelation, I'm like, I've never even heard of that myself, right, you know. Right. And, um, and so she's just overwhelmed, and we're just like in prayer. And then I see myself older, like a little bit older, and I'm sitting up on the edge of the same bed in the same room. And I'm holding that jewel in my hand, and he says, put it in your bones. Well, I have it in my right hand because I can visually see it. And then I'm telling that he's wanting me to put it in my left femur. And so I'm sitting on the bed, and when I do it's like I see it absorbed in mm-hmm. my skin and into mm-hmm. the bone. And it's like I feel it running through my bone marrow, and it's strengthening my back, and, my, and it's just flowing through my body, just that. It's just, it's just unbelievable. So we're just overwhelmed. We get through the whole process of the um, sozo, and so we're just uh, talking about it at the end, you know, with our eyes open, just talking yeah. in the room about what God did. And then it, I remember uh, what had happened to me five years before and that I had been to the doctor, and, uh, and I was diagnosed with the – uh, a benign tumor. It's just a, a <laughs> cartilage tumor in yeah. your femur. And uh, and I'm remembering this. I said, it's in my left femur, that cartilage tumor. And so they had sent me uh, to, it was like five years prior, and I went to MD Anderson in uh, Houston. And they had diagnosed it that it was benign. And it just like, if you're, you know, at this age and you haven't had any problem, but they said, it's the size of your fist. In your femur, or you know, it's in inca- it's like full yes. in your in your femur, and uh, so it's a miracle it's never come out because then you would have complications if it would come out of your femur, but whatever. And so it's uh, he said no treatment necessary, you're good to go. And but then I'm I'm putting the two and two together. I mean, and I'm just like, oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that this is supernatural, yes. that God would give me that and tell me years later, but then it's matching a diagnosis. And yes. and uh, even with the hospital of documentation, of proving that God is so faithful. Go, He's so, so faithful. And in one moment, there was such healing and revelation and peace and just it was just supernatural what God was doing that it's just 
it was just I was just overwhelmed of his goodness yeah. that he would show me this that people live a lifetime and don't get this type of revelation sometimes you know but he's so faithful to show it to you but I will say this they don't get it because they're not seeking yes and yes. I know you yes and I know how you <laughs> seek the Lord Amen. so I, I I wanted them to know this is why you keep hearing your pastor say it you got to be diligent in yeah. seeking him because oh my God. Every and everything that is him is in you. Yeah. He just wants to reveal it. Yes. But we've got to seek him. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to tag on that about 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 seeking him. I think it's so beauty the beauty of the journey, and I know that we've talked about this before, as we're seeking him, it's that you would believe him. Yes. See, I could have had that sozo and not even believe that. Right. You know, could have said, right. oh, that was just kind of like a fluke. Yes. But I believed that when yes. he when he, when I saw it and when he spoke those words. And and uh, and I just wanted to encourage others that when you're seeking, you have to really be open to believe that it yes. is true. Yes, yes, you do. And you definitely have to do that. Mm -hmm. OK, we got to get through okay. seven chapters. Let's do OK, it. and Let's share do it. these jewels yes <laughs> that in each one and your very first chapter is recognizing mm. the battlefield yes okay so i'm going to turn it to you okay. what is what do you think uh, and, and all of this is good let me say this yes all of this is good mm -hmm. but what would you say i if, if i'm gonna take away from chapter one mm -hmm. what is the biggest takeaway um, I think the biggest thing for, for me, uh, Tony, is the fact that most people are unaware of their circumstance and their atmosphere. And that's one thing that I really have found the greatest, some of the greatest victories in my life is to be able to see um, the danger that's around you and aware of your circumstance, mm -hmm. you know, and knowing that as we're going to get further on is that you have to do something pr to prepare for that yes. when you see it. Yes. And then you have to expect the enemy is coming. Oh, yeah. OK, it's not that he, he may come. No, he's coming. Yes. And that is his job. He's, he's going to always try to deter us off the path of, of finding the Lord or seeking him or really walking in the freedom. And so that's the greatest thing is that I really want to say is that you have to really recognize that there is a real enemy that's after you and after destroy your mind. And that you have to be able to see it and to know it and be prepared to do something about it. And you know what? That is so powerful. I think you and I were talking about that. And I was talking with someone the other day, too. And I was saying, you know, there is good and evil. Mm. And we have to understand that. Yes. You know? And uh, we have to also... And so if there is good then and there is evil then we have to be able to distinguish what is good and what is evil. That's right. Uh, and, and acknowledge that it happens. Sometimes we have labeled so much mm -hmm. in this country yeah. that we, you know, we want to dump everything on mental illness. Yeah. And I'm just going to say right. that. That's right. It's true. But it may not necessarily be a... Uh, and be treated like a mental, mm -hmm. like we treat everything, medicate right. everything, and do everything. But it could be evil. That's right. Just evil. That's right. And when I think of a lot of these shootings that are happening, mm -hmm. there is a presence of evil. Absolutely. Absolutely. And we have to recognize that mm -hmm. and be aware. So I just want to say that real quickly, okay? All right. So once we recognize and we are aware... Mm -hmm. Then your chapter two is discovering the truth. Absolutely, so, I think this is the um, this is the foundation of everything that uh, that's any victory in our life. Mm -hmm. You know, is definitely discovering the truth, and the truth is the word of God, and um, and being able to, and a lot of times. There's a whole journey of discovering that because sometimes it's not just reading a word. Discovering is something is to make it true for you 
and and to be able to grab a hold of it and mm-hmm. really really believe it. And so if you have the enemies coming at you in one direction and discovering a truth that's going to be able to be able to stand on that truth. And most people don't know <laughs> their truth. They yes. don't know what they believe and they don't know the word of God and they may be in church every week but they really don't know it. And it, you, there's one thing to know something and there's one thing to be tested on something and to see how much you really really believe it and this is where I really found the whole journey of really discovering the word of God and really being able to read it to learn it and asking the Lord like what does that mean in my spirit that you got to get it like in your bones will you really really believe it so you can apply it to different areas in your life because that's what I just noticed that there's been a fight all of our lives for our mind. That's where you talk yes. to anybody. That's where they they're they're dealing with. That's the entry part that it comes in, and you have to uh, be able to address it and grab the word of God and be able to apply it. But you have to learn how how to fight for your mind and how and how to be able to do it. And so even though you recognize the enemy and you want to discover the word of God, but that's just the beginning. beginning. That's just yes. the beginning. You know. Yeah. Yeah, so. I, I love that. And, you know, I love uh, there are several things that you say. Uh, remember these things to walk in freedom of your mind. Discovering the truth is our life. It is. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I had somebody say to me one time, well, what is the truth? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Amen. It's the word of God. It's the word of God. That's right. It's the final authority, which mm-hmm. you know. That's right. We hear <laughs> That's all the, the time. That's right. all the time. I love and that. And so I wanted to make that statement because I hear a lot of people say, well, what is the truth? Mm-hmm. There it is. Every, yeah. Everything you can think of, everything that you're experiencing in life is addressed. That's right. In the word of it God. It is. It is. It is. One thing I want to talk about. Go ahead. Because uh, Go I talk a lot about worship. Worship, yeah. Uh, because I really found a freedom of uh, discovering who he was in worship, where you can worship him for who he is and not just what you can give me, you know? And that's a whole revelation in itself, and it's beautiful because that's that's what we were created to worship him. But one thing I, I want to really say in recognizing the battlefield and discovering the truth is I stated here, it was yes. in God's presence that I learned to never change my position and worship. worship. And on. it said, and always worship through, through your storm. storm. And, um, and a lot of times people will say, maybe I don't feel anything or I'm reading the word and I don't understand it or I don't feel it. And, and that's why I really learned in this whole process. It's not about your feelings. Mm-hmm. Now, God does care about your feelings. I don't yes. want to say that, that he doesn't. And you will feel again, you know, and it will awaken that to the word of God. But but it's not just about feelings and that you can do it because it's right. Yes. And it will bring alignment in your life when yes. you do it, yes. you know. Yes. And so that sets us up. Yes. Chapter three. Okay. Preparing the three. for the battle. And this is, this is really important to me because, yes. you know, I grew up as, a, as an athlete. I played a lot of ball in my life, and, um, and I learned a lot of strategy playing ball. And, um, and so I really kind of applied it here, too, is preparing for the battle because you have to know without a shadow of a doubt that the enemy is coming. But most people are fearful of that, mm-hmm. that if they've dealt with fear or if they've dealt with anxiety or sickness or whatever that thing is that ever worked in your life, it will, the enemy's coming after that thing again. Yes. Yes. Okay, so uh, no matter what that is, whether you had uh, anorexia or whether you had low self-esteem or whether you dealt with overspending or whether you dealt with fear and anxiety, yes. all these different things and say you had some victory in it, the enemy's coming after that thing yeah. again. Yes. So if people were abused, they'll find cycles of that surfacing in their life again and again. And again. So it's very, very important to out, out of wisdom that you you begin to uh, prepare for your battle. And if you don't know your truth, then how can you prepare for your battle? So that's why you can recognize the enemy's coming and that you have to know your truth. And that's a forever journey of learning that. And then when you um, know he's coming, then you have to start preparing. So just like any 
uh, sport, sporting event, they're planning on offense and defense. They're planning for the attack. Anytime a military, anything, they are planning for the attack. He's going to come. Yes. You know, and that's what happens in our lives that we live on defense constantly of just fighting the enemy off of us and not operating an offense, offense. and planning and strategy how to protect your family, how to protect your home, how to protect your mind. And, and that's where this, this whole victory comes in that I love. I love it. I love it. And one of the things um, I love, and it's a lot of bold, you have bold print in here, but the one that really grabbed hold of me, and, and they're all good guys, let me just yeah. say that. But you said, so I reach way down mm. deep inside and remembered if I force my mind to lean lean into God and hide in his presence. My mind will line up with his word. My emotions will rage as they will, but they will submit and surrender to the spirit if my mind stays focused on what is true. That's a mouthful. That's right a there. mouthful right there. And that's a lifetime it of is. journey. It yeah. is a journey. And so, you know, I'm always reminded there are four things that can cause us to, to stumble. Familiarity, mm-hmm. uh, fear, uh, feelings, yeah. and fact. Right. Those four things. And mm-hmm. not to say that they're, they're all bad, mm-hmm. but when it becomes, that's the only thing you react to. That's right. Uh, react out of, mm-hmm. then yet it will cause you to stumble. That's right. And that's where the truth of this word has to mm-hmm. come in and that's override right. those four that's things. That's right. That's right. And especially because I really feel like you talk to a lot of people in, especially, I don't know, all over the world, but especially America, I find that everything is so based on how you feel. Yes. And that's your final authority yes. in the world's word, you know, yes. that how you feel about it. And, and I have learned that we are the gatekeepers of our mind. We are the gatekeepers, and God has given us authority over that. And just because your mind wants to think something doesn't mean it has the authority to think it. And you can control what you're spending time with. And most people, like, you can't control the random thought that comes through. But whatever you want to grab a hold to and think about it and meditate on it, that thing will become bigger and bigger and bigger in our life. And so we have to realize that we're the gatekeeper over that, and that's why against you emotions and I may have tears running down my face and I may not believe it at all because I'm so angry or frustrated about my situation but it's true if you will lean into him and you will worship him and you will trust him in prayer and hide in him in that time your emotions are still feeling I may be bawling crying I may be angry still but if I force myself to do that (laughs) it will eventually re- Calibrate. Yeah. Okay. And your emotions will get in line and yes. then they will abide to the word because the word trumps your emotions. Every time. Every time. Every time. I tell you, this book is so powerful. <laughs> uh, and we're not doing it justice right now. So I know, got, I know. You know. Put up the website, Adrian. Well, you're going to have to go to this website and you're going to have to download this ebook. Mm-hmm. But we're moving into chapter four, four and now okay. it talks about how Amen. we apply the truth. Amen. Amen. And and I love it. Uh, it requires an action. Yeah, you it tell does. Us in there. So I'm going to send right. it back to you. And, it, and especially because um, it, it's something that you have to build your muscle memory with, okay? And that's just any that goes with faith. And again, walking in it, all yes. of this, you have to build your muscle memory. And when you're young using this, no matter how old you are, but when you're beginning to use this, you're going to be clumsy, even like a brand new deer trying to walk. You know, you're going to be clumsy with it. You're going to try to do it. It's not going to feel good. It's, you're not going to understand it. But it's not about all of that. It's about just being faithful. And Father God loves our process. I yes, mean, and, we, and so many times we are fighting our process <laughs> constantly because yes. we really just want an outcome. Mm. And but where I really learned who he was in his nature was in his process. You know, and then you learn how to stop fighting that and just say, Lord, speak to me and teach me how to get through it. 
Like, what is it do I need to move forward with? So the whole thing is, is building that muscle memory. I gave a whole analogy about playing tennis, and he was yeah. just saying, as, as I would hit the ball, and uh, he said, my ball is my best coach. So if I can learn how, if I know the strategy, how to hit the right stroke, and I do it again and again, okay, you will build a muscle memory. So when I'm in the game, Come on. And I'm stressed out or I get emotional or I hit a bad hit and I'm using just tennis as an example and I want I get scared or I get emotional and I don't want to go after the next hit because yeah. I missed the other one. You have to if you learned enough about your muscle memory, you will go back in your mind of the practice and you will just go at it as your as your muscle memory will kick in and it will bypass your fear. Yes. Okay? Come on. And that That's not so just good. applied it to our own life here and it's so so critical if you learn and you spend time with him and he's teaching you then you have to begin to apply it and then if this is the time that you're going to build that muscle memory and even when we don't do well and say uh, we get overwhelmed and, and we're battling with doubt or fear or whatever and but this is a time that you have to just start you just start over again you just get back up again. Yes. You know, and they they always said that the difference between a sinner and a saint is the saint gets it's back up, up again. You know, <laughs> and I love that, and that's really what I really learned is you have to build your muscle memory, and you will you will keep you use your words, spend time, and everybody says, "What's the secret?" You know, I know you've heard that of your life. I know yes. here everyone that's lived long enough and been through enough things, yes. they'll say, "What is your secret?" And the secret really is, it's just it's spending time. In your word, spending time in worship, in prayer, staying in in a church. You have to be in a covering, you know, being yes. in the anointing. It's very, very critical to find out what pastors has God called you, what shepherds has he called you to get up underneath and learn from, you know. Yes. And it's so critical to stay in the anointing. And everybody say it's it's not rocket science. It's just, nope. it's just process of staying in that and being faithful in that and learning and not beating your yourself up every time you fall no. because you I want uh, Miles Monroe said that Dr. Miles Monroe said it's never a failure if you learn from it that's right and that's what I have learned even through this whole uh, building your muscle memory is stop fighting the rights and wrongs and just keep at it and you will build your muscle memory and it will be stronger so when you go through different storms you'll remember he was faithful in this time yes he'll be faithful, faithful. again Amen. And you build an altar of remembrance. Say that one more time. Yes. And so after every storm in your life, you will build an altar of how God helped you through that. Okay? But when you go through another storm in your life, you have to go back and remember the altars that he has kept you. So there's an altar of remembrance that you have to extract from. Even though I'm going through this storm in my life, he kept me in that storm. And if he hasn't kept you personally, like if you haven't felt that, then you have, you can lean in. He kept my grandmother. He kept my mama. And that is for me too. And Amen. you can reach back. That's your inheritance. It's, there it is. That's your inheritance. Yes. So if, you, if someone doesn't know it to be true for you, you can hang on to someone else and say, if God can get them, he can keep, keep me, me. Amen. you know. And so. you know what? This rolls us right into chapter five, adjusting and realigning. Yeah. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And, uh, and this is what's so important that most people, when they're all about the right and the wrongs. And this is something that I really find a lot when I'm mentoring and mm -hmm. uh, just really are praying with people at the altar. People feel uh, they, they're so defeated. You know, yes. um, like if someone was trying to get off drugs or they were trying to um, deal with their past of abuse and they keep making bad mistakes and, and getting in bad relationships or whatever. Um, it's so important uh, that you just have to adjust and realign, you know, and I use this um one of the things I learned in my process was how to think. Another thing I learned was not to let my emotions drive. Yeah. When when a couple when you couple these together, it's powerful. And so that is the greatest victory. If you can learn how to think and how to process, your body will get in check. 
okay? Yes. Because this, whatever flows from the head, it flows down. And so if your mind is off and your thinking is off, then all of your emotions and everything will be out of alignment. Yes. So no matter what happens, is, and I learned this too, learning how to think is more powerful than just being obedient. Yes. So you can learn how, I tell this all the time, you can, you can follow the checklist if I was a parent and I'm raising a child and say, I want you to do this, this and this, this and, this. and this. But as they get older, it's very critical that they learn why they're doing this, what's the importance of it, and they learn how to make their own decisions and choices based off of this truth, Yes. okay? Because if all I am is just following a list and when I go through something in life, then I don't know how to think. I don't know yes. how to make decisions. I yes. don't know how to process yes. and anything in life. And so learning how to think is very critical. And like, again, back to saying that we are the gatekeeper of our mind of what comes in. And so we have to control that, you know, and what we meditate on. But it's very, very, very critical that you have to, um, you have to address your issues on purpose. Yes. And I think this is very, very critical. Most people don't like to deal with conflict. And I have a couple people in my life that laugh. They say, you like conflict. And I don't like conflict. I don't like conflict to control me. You know, in, in situations, I like to deal with them. Right, right. Then I, then. I do because I, I like to walk in victory. Yes. And if I'm not... And if there, if I think that there's an issue, I would rather address it so we can move forward. Yeah. Not that I'm trying to stir up problems. That's crazy. That doesn't even align with the word. But it's very, very critical that we address our issues on purpose so we can walk in victory. Yes. Over and over and over, and over again. again. And you have to address them and realign. Things are going to happen. You have to just go back at it a different way. You have to look at the word, go back to the Lord, and what is that, and keep working that in our life. And even if you've had one victory in your life, it doesn't mean that that one thing is not going to show up down the road. Oh, it's going to show back up. That's right. <laughs> and so, and then you have to deal with it from a different, different angle. angle. So like if someone lost their mother at a young age, she's going to deal with that a young girl, she was going to deal with that when she meets her first boyfriend. Mm -hmm. She's got to address it from that issue. Yeah. Then when she graduates from high school or college or when she's getting married or when she has her first baby, all of that she's going to have to address that healing with her mom. Yes. Because my mom's not here, here. in this season of my life, in this season of my life, in this season. And now, you know what I mean? Yes. And so you have to, even though you had your victory and your healing or a breakthrough, through. It's processing it through the journey. Even though all this abuse that happened in my life, I still deal, deal with it from a different angle. Yes. You know? There's a, you know, it's a, a couple of years ago, God gave me a word about residue. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this season for me, and it's been a season of about two years, is he is helping me work through the residue mm. of stuff that is left. That's right. Okay, where I've had breakthrough. Right. Okay, but not totally healed. Mm -hmm. And so it's been amazing. You talked about the sozo, mm -hmm. but I experienced a lot of, he showed me the residue mm. of what was left for me to be working on during this time. Mm -hmm. And I don't even want to take away from that, but I had that same experience. Mm, that's good. And so it does, season after season, whatever residue is left from that particular that's right. challenge or, mm -hmm. or issue you've gone through, you're going to have to process that. Right. But, but you've gotten over the huge hump of that's that right. thing. That's so right. So it does become easier. Your muscle memory will go, you will recognize more and more. Oh, that's that residue. That's mm -hmm. where that comes that's from. That's right. You that's know? right. I'm loving this book. Oh, this good. book, good, I'm good, telling good. you. Okay. I love it. Chapter six is believing and walking mm. in okay. the truth. Okay. Come on, This girl. is something that I really, I think probably in the last five years has really been really big for me um, because uh, you can know something to be true. Mm-hmm. And then there's a difference between knowing it and believing it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I wanted to grab this because he shares it so great. I was quoting Dr. Um, Pritchard. Dr. Pritchard. Yeah. And, um, and he just quotes it so wonderful. Uh, and he said here, 
and he's quoting a friend, okay, mm-hmm. that is saying this that had lost their child and they were really dealing with some grief and processing through it. Mm-hmm. And he said, uh, my friend points out the difference between believing and knowing. To believe something is to have it influence actions and attitudes. If I believe it, then it will change the way I view my life. Mm-hmm. If I just know it, then it is just one more fact I can recite from memory. Can I tell you? That's huge. That is so huge. Yes. That smacked me all up Mm-mm. in my face last yes. night. Yes, because I'm really passionate about something that you believe. And um, because if you believe it, and I use a statement that you would die for it. Yes. You know, that you own it, you believe it, and no one can take that from you. Nobody. And that's what's so powerful about a testimony, because people may differ on the way you perceive the word of God in the way they do or the or in general the word of God but no one is going to battle with you of your testimony no. and that's what's they so can. powerful what has God done in your life and that you have to believe it but even more importantly even in the word the only time that Jesus ever reprimanded his disciples or others around him that was frustrated is because when they were doubting and not believing right that's it that's you know it. and and even with the Pharisees because they were missing the whole point being and so religious that they missed the concept of what the rule was for. Yes. And so, and not really believing in his word and that Jesus is manifested, God in himself, right here in front of you, and you are <laughs> missing it. And so that's what, so what I love about is believing it is when it gets in your bones. Come you on. own it and that you can live it. So even if you're not feeling it, Come on. Okay? If you believe it, you can trust the Lord and walk in it. I believe him to be true. My Father God is faithful, and he's with me in that I know his nature, so I can trust him even when I'm not comfortable with what's happening in my life right now. Right. You know, and so I just I love that it's so so powerful about believing it, and I kind of give you an, an an example between knowing and believing, kind of back and forth. But um, that I just it, another thing too, if you can really believe something, that you will know without a shadow of a doubt that I'm not quitting. Yeah. You know, and I think that's really what people have to get down in their spirit that no matter what comes, I'm, I'm pressing, yes. I'm pushing, yes. and I'm not. Quitting because yes. the enemy is constantly telling you that you're defeated, that you can't move forward, or you'll never have that. You can only have this much. Your your limitations are on your life, and you're constantly people deal with insecurities and they deal with fear and they deal with all kind of different issues that they can only be this. Yes, and that's what I'm so passionate about. It's just really trusting the Lord and trusting His Word, and that there's no limits. And don't you dare grab that victim mentality that you can't you can't make it. You know what? You said that, and I have to share this real quick, and we're getting close to the last chapter mm-hmm. here. But um, I've been studying uh, this in Romans, and this is the translation, uh, Passion Translation version of it. And uh, it's Romans 8, and um, and I know you also, we're going into the next chapter, and I think that's where you quote a lot of Romans. But I feel like this is apropos right here. Mm-hmm. It's And it's um, verse 12, Romans 8, 12. So then, beloved ones, the flesh has no claims on us at all. Mm-hmm. We have no further obligation to live in obedience to our flesh. Wow. For when you live controlled by the flesh, you are about to die. Mm. But if but if the life of the spirit puts to death the corrupt ways of the flesh, then we test taste his abundant life. Wow. Sons and daughters are destined for glory. That's beautiful. I just love it. I just love it. I love it. And we it. are. We're just we are. destined. We're destined for glory. Mm-hmm. And we have to connect mm-hmm. to that. Yeah, but we have to believe that. And we have to believe it. Yes. Because you can't change someone's actions until you change someone's belief system. That's right. You know? That's and right. so the belief system is critical. Is yes. what do you believe? Yes. You know? And uh, because you can just say, I know that. 
And uh, But no, no, no. If I believe it, my life will line up with my belief systems. That's right. So whatever my actions are, they're tied into what I believe. That's right. So if it's contradictory of what I know and what I, my actions are, then you know that your your mind is off. Yes. Because I'm saying, oh, I'm this, or I believe this, but my actions show something different. That's right. You know? And, so we, it's and a critical. lot of us live like that. Absolutely. Yes, and you wonder do. why you're in, you know, no peace. No peace. That's and right. you can't have peace when you're divided like yeah. that. You really can't. You can't. So. Yes. Okay. It's my favorite. Is yes, the last chapter. this is my favorite too. My favorite. Because you know the scripture is based on. Yeah. I live on this one. That's right. So you know Psalm ninety one. So I just love it. But you, less hiding in the stronghold. Yes. Powerful. This is my favorite. Um, and this is something that I was just really digging deep. Um, back over my life, thinking of myself even as a young girl because I wasn't raised in church. Like I said, we kind of did some holiday things when Mm -hmm. I was really young. And so, but I got saved in seventh grade. So then at that point I was in church, but in my younger years and the beginning of a lot of this abuse is when I was around five. And, um, but I was looking back over my life, just really writing of where was I? You know, and what was I thinking? How was I feeling? And so this this book was very emotional for me because I really went back into some places in my mind that I haven't visited in a long time because you can learn to testify a little bit out of your head yes. from memory. Yes. But when you touch your heart, it, it, it's emotional, yes. you know. But when I was having to write there, it was, you know, very, very much of a challenge for me. So anyway, but I really wanted to share this because... Um, I've learned this through the journey of my life of even of the abuse and uh, my struggle in my marriage um, and also uh, the loss of my son, Gavin. I had known um, how to hide in the Lord from my younger years. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really understand what all that meant even before I got saved, you know, because there was encounters that was happening that I didn't really understand what they were. And... um, and I use the statement of hiding in the stronghold of the Lord. And I know a lot of times the stronghold is used as a negative uh, mm. tone, you know what I mean, like a, of, a, of a, yes. a sin or something like right. that. But this is so beautiful, and I really want to explain this because I really believe when you hide underneath the shadow of his wing, like in mm-hmm. Psalm 91, but I feel like there's a deeper place that you can hide in him even like it's the covering of his wing and he's comforting you and he's loving you and he's fighting for you but when you can really abide at a very deep place I really believe that's where a place that you heal and that he rearranges your mind and he aligns things for you and he restores you and he teaches you deep, deep in that stronghold. And I learned at that place where I could hide in him that it silences the voices of the enemy. And so like when you hear all this stuff going on, but if you hide in him deep enough, it's like all that gets silenced away and it's just you and him. Yes. And you'll find that in prayer. It's almost like you get sucked into a place, yes. in the hiding. Yes. In the, and I, I use this statement because the enemy can't reach you there. No, he can't. And then you can't hear his words. You can't hear that. And it's just like you hide away in there. And it's so powerful. And I learned how to do that in my mind. Mm-hmm. even being in a room, I learned how to go in a place like that in my mind, in the stronghold where I could do it in my mind. You know, like no matter what was going on in the room, I could hide in my mind. I've watched you do that at church. <laughs> when and, we, we've been in worship, I've watched you go to a place. Mm. And I think if we dropped a bomb beside you, yeah, you wouldn't move because you were in that place. Perfect yeah. place with God. That's right. I just love it. And it's so powerful. And I really believe that the Lord uh, gave me access to um, access there literally as a secret of heaven. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people don't know how to do it, do that. And, um, and I didn't even really understand what that was when I was younger because it's like I knew him before I knew him. Mm-hmm. 
you know, and I had this uh, assurance that when the Lord would come on me, it's like there was an assurance that this is not going to be your life. And uh, and then when I met him in seventh grade and had the encounter, it was like, I know you. And then he just began, the Holy Spirit just been teaching me. And, and like I said, in I was getting revelation and understanding of how to fight the enemy and how to take back my life and still bring honor and respect to your parent, you mm-hmm. know. But yet when that spirit was active, I didn't have to obey that spirit. Mm-hmm. And that was a whole back and forth in your mind because it's like, you know, today, you know, we're, we're dealing with this and then today – you have to honor him, and today we're dealing with this spirit, and you're going to have to war. But as a young girl, I didn't want to, like, I just wanted it to be better. Like, I don't right. want to have to do this. But the Holy Spirit was really saying that I can rescue you. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm a rescuer, mm-hmm. and I will. I will leave the 99 and run after yes. the one. I will. But I really have a different assignment on your life, and that's really, really, I felt like the Lord was was teaching me is that, I can rescue you, and I am your rescuer, and I am your defender, but I want to empower you, and I want to teach you how to speak to the enemy, and the enemy will obey. Yes. And you have to use your authority. Yes. And uh, and like I said, at 15, it, when, when I was learning that, it didn't mean a whole lot to me at 15. But, but what I learned in that moment has transformed everything in my life. And that was the foundation. And so that's what I love about hiding in him. He will give you revelation that will carry you a lifetime. He will cover you. He will protect you. He will shield you. And uh, and I, I just loved it because it's a place that, like I said, I can go in my mind and, and even when there's strife and there's anxiety going on and there's pain, Especially like when I, I was telling you before that you learned how to live through pain that's unbearable. Mm-hmm. When people have really been in the depths of pain mm-hmm. and, um, and there's nothing like knowing, knowing him in that place. That knowing how to run and hide there because it's too much for your natural mind. Your natural mind can't. And there's not enough anxiety medicine out there and counseling that can help with that. There's a nope. place that that what can happen in his presence can't compare. I've been on anxiety medicine. I know, you know. And what has been in that place and then in the whole thing where I, t- I told the story about having to, when I was off medication, and he came alongside of me and taught me how to worship through the anxiety attacks without the medicine. Yeah. My and, daughter and I were talking about yeah. that this morning. Because she used s- suffered That's right. from anxiety. Yeah. And we were talking about that, how powerful and thank God that you shared that story mm. in this book. We're not going to give it away. Yeah. But you shared it in this book and how yeah. he taught you to worship. Yeah. And uh, to walk through that. But I want to say this, um, and I want to give you one minute to talk to this, your your camera. Uh, but I want to say this about this book. Uh, again, go to uh, Julie G's uh, website, uh, juliegiordano.org. You can download this ebook. She also has these uh, the Mind Keeper declarations. You can see mine look a little beat up, but it's great to hang on your purse or hang it in your car, and you can be reminded. Uh, mm-hmm. I was so glad that one of the first ones you put here was one that we've been studying through uh, uh, our 23rd Psalm small groups. Yes. And of course, it's 1 Peter 5 7, you know, cast all your mm-hmm. cares upon yeah. him. And you've just said just so much here, and this book is so powerful, but I really want to encourage them to get this book. It will change your life, but most of all, it will teach you. It will teach you how to walk in freedom. Right. And it and, and all the principles, it's clearly all the principles I hear. That's why I keep saying, God, this 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 book is just so powerful. It's transforming. Mm. That's the word I want to say. It's transforming. It is, and it's simple in its form that you grab hold of the all the nuggets and all the revelation of this, and you will. 
be walking in freedom. It doesn't matter what's going to come up. It does. You know, when you're talking, I just kept seeing in that storm, Jesus Christ, how he was sleeping on the boat. Yeah. And they had to run to him and wake him up. Yeah. You know, and he walks out and basically says, peace, be still. Yeah. Well, this is what this reminds me of. I love that. If you're in a storm and the boat is rocking and you need peace, get this book. Mm. Get I this book because it's it. the word of God. Amen. Yes, it is. Amen. 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 So, Julie G., it's been a pleasure to have you on this segment of of uh, Hidden Gems because this is a gem <laughs> and you. it cannot be hidden yes, any yes. longer. But I want to give you the last word. Okay. And so I want you to look at that camera and speak to hurting people out there, period. Not just women mm -hmm. because men hurt too. Amen. You know, and we got children out there that are hurting. And as a child, God made himself known to you. You may not have known exactly what was going on, but he kept you yes, even he did. then. So I want to turn it to you. Absolutely. Um, I just want to charge you, anyone that is viewing this uh, and just believing that, that God is for you. I want you to know without a shadow of a doubt, no matter where you are in your pain, in your process, or in your life and what you're dealing with in your mind and what battles. And you know when you lay your head on the pillow at night, you know what you're dealing with and the thing that keeps you up at night and the thing that keeps stirring you and awakening pain in your journey. So I just speak life over you. I speak to the the power of God is with you, that he's for you, that he is your mind keeper and that he's keeping you in your past, in your present and in your future. And there is no weapon formed against you that shall be able to prosper and that you are stronger than you think you are. You will make it because Father God is for you. He's fighting for you and he's defending you. And I see you on the other side. I really do. I see you in victory. I see you walking in faith. And I just encourage you to hang on to the word and believe it, apply these principles, and uh, I just really believe that God's going to totally transform your mind and teach you how to think and take the, your mind back and take your life back in Jesus' name. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I can get up and run around this room. <laughs> but once again, I want to uh, end this by saying thank you again mm. for coming on. Uh, you know, uh, uh, this is literally mm -hmm. transforming and I just want to say to everyone out there um, really go to the website mm -hmm. get the book share it but I also want to say to ministries and to uh, churches and to um, nonprofit organization um, if you're looking for a speaker that can come in and share the, the word of God in such a powerful way as you've heard here today, you need to contact her and you need to have her come in mm -hmm. and speak to your women's ministry, speak to the youth, uh, speak to uh, your congregation because we all need to know how to keep our mind. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us today. Have a great and blessed day. And tune in again to Hidden Gems of the Ocoee Region. <laughs>